Hello everyone, this is Jinx, one of the Monster Hunter Math Guys. So, in yesterday's video, we discussed all of the intricacies behind how poison works and how to calculate the strength of poison damage. And the day before that, we put out a video talking about how status in general works, all of its mechanics and the math behind it. Now, understanding the core concepts taught in those videos is kind of essential to understand the discussion we're having today, so if you don't know what decay rates, buildups, thresholds, how you calculate poison damage works, etc., link in the top right and the description to those videos. Alright, now that we understand how poison works as well as how to calculate its effectiveness in terms of damage, let's talk about the practical application of that. Which is going to be talking about why the Gold Rathian weapons are frankly overpowered. Now there are two main reasons why we're talking about this. A, we have already talked about why Gold Rathian weapons are one of if not the best speedrunner choice, but we haven't also talked about in depth why they are the best comfy build choice. And B, next week we are planning on starting a series about comfy builds. So in order to avoid having to repeat every single video why the Gold Rathian weapon is the best choice for comfy builds, we're talking about it here instead. Now before we get into this full explanation, a quick reminder, we do have a Twitter where we post updates about videos and general things that interest us, and Tuna does stream live on Twitch almost every single day. As soon as this video goes live, he will also be live, so be sure to come hang out. Okay, let's talk about the Gold Rathian weapons. So here's the thing, after we actually look at the numbers, poison isn't that strong of a status. Now assuming your runs aren't super clean, you're probably going to be getting about 4 poisons per run. However, if you're a speedrunner level of clean, you generally get around 3 per run. And this ends up being pretty much consistent across the board for all different styles of weakness for reasons we explained in yesterday's video. Now poison is of course amazing on 3 star monsters, but most monsters in the game are 2 star or lower. On 19,000 HP monsters like most tier 2 monsters, we're looking at 7.22% for 2 stars and 3.49% higher EFR you need to beat a poison set. And for most Elder Dragons that are around 25,000, you have to have 5.4% in order to beat it at 2 star and 2.63% at 1 star. Now this is really nice, but it's not that huge of an EFR gain. For the 1 star matchups, we're talking about less than the amount of damage return you get out of one level of crit boost with 100% affinity. So despite that, why are the Gold Rathian weapons so good? Well, that's because they are stacked. So Gold Rathian weapons at 290 true raw. This is the highest in the game for melee weapons before the Rajang weapons were added. This is the same raw damage you have on your Diablos and Brute Tigrex weapons, except for those have over 20% negative affinity, and the Gold Rathian weapons have 10 to 15% positive affinity. On top of this, they have 60 to 70 natural units of white sharpness depending on which weapon you're talking about. Now, of course, they can't hit purple sharpness, but purple sharpness isn't a huge deal. It's only a 5.3% increase in raw damage, which means instead of having to invest points into handicraft in order to get purple sharpness, they can just run agitator or attack boost or peak performance. This also means they aren't dependent on using handicraft and master's touch to have purple sharpness for their damage. This makes them amazing and by far the best weapon choice for comfy builds that don't rely on Master's Touch. See, while weapons like the Sharl weapons and the Acidic Glavinous weapons do compete with the Gold Rathian weapons, the Gold Rathians don't have to run Master's Touch builds and Handicraft to hit Purple Sharpness. Depending on how aggressively you play, you might not even need all 60 units before a monster transitions to the next area, and if you do, you just want to raise a sharp charm. Now, all of these stats and more are why the Gold Rathian is so strong even if it didn't have poison on it, it would be a very competitive raw option choice. If it had hidden poison or no poison instead and could use non-elemental boost, it would just straight up be the best raw option in the game. And if it had neither poison or non-elemental boost and had like 10 fire damage or something, it would still be top 5 weapons in the game. But then, Capcom decided to give this weapon poison damage. This means even against 1 star weak to poison elder dragons, all you need is about 3 poison procs to equalize the damage difference if you have 2% less EFR. 2% is about how much other raw weapons can beat the gold Rathian weapons by. Now there is a speedrunner Shara build that beats it by about 4%. This is only now possible because the last patch lets the Shara weapons run 2 attack augments. Even though we're showing the switch axe here, this template works for most weapons. The problem is, this is only for sure going to beat the Gold Rathian weapons on 1 star weak monsters, and it has to be a speedrunner set. 
You have to run a high rank piece of armor for the helmet. You have to have guard decals. You cannot fit in any health boost or anything else. Otherwise, the gold Rathian set beats it. Now, this is a bit more nuanced because you do have to consider peak performance uptime on the gold Rathian set. But if we're looking at speedrunner builds, this can only beat gold Rathian sets on one star weak monsters if you have all of these multipliers stacked. There's also the Zora Longsword set we covered in the previous video. In speedruns, this can theoretically beat the Gold Rathian given the right weakness to Stalus's conditions, but we're not 100% on anything with that. And this is for speedrunner builds. If you're going for comfier sets that have less damage skills but stack things like Health Boost, and Divine Blessing, etc., then the Gold Rathian weapons are by far the best because the lower your EFR gets and the lower your damage per hit gets, the stronger poison gets. And you have 60 to 70 natural units of white sharpness, and depending on how you play, you don't even need Razor Sharp to not hit blue sharpness. As an example for how good the Gold Rathian is at comfort builds, let's take a look at what some optimized Divine Blessing 5 Health Boost 3 sets look like. So let's start off with the Gold Rathian set for this. So for this, we're going to be running two pieces of Gold Rathian armor in order to get Divine Blessing secrets. We run the chest and the waist because the chest actually has the same efficiency as the Brute Tigrex chest, just with Divine Blessing instead of Attack Boost. Similarly, the waist piece is one of the most efficient, if not the most efficient pieces of armor you can find for waist pieces. And I do know that the Gold Rathian legs do have two weakness exploit. However, in terms of efficiency, the Young Garuga legs actually get two crit eye and the exact same efficiency, so it's better that we run those. And then we run the Black Vel Hazark helmet as well as the Runa Nogagante arms because they're simply the most efficient pieces for their slots. Now the Razor Sharp Charm here is only necessary if you play aggressively enough to burn through more than 60 units of white before a monster transitions to the next area. But just to show off how strong the Gold Rathian weapons are on comfy sets, we'll just go ahead and use a Razor Sharp Charm for it. So this puts us at 737.35 EFR. Now let's go ahead and take the same Divine Blessing 5 Comfy set and transfer it to a different weapon. Now the second comfiest weapon in the game and the one you should use if your weapon class doesn't have a Gold Rathian weapon is the Runa Nogagante weapon. Now only some weapon classes get a Gold Rathian weapon. And even for the ones that don't, the Shara, Acidic, Glavinous, and Rajang weapons do beat the Runa Nogagante in pure damage output with Master's Touch in the set. However, the Runa no Gigante weapons have a huge advantage in terms of comfier sets, which is going to be 110 natural units of white sharpness. This means if you do not want to run Master's Touch, this is your best option unless you have access to a Gold Rathian weapon. But back to the comparison, this does hit 748.44 EFR. This puts it at a 1.5% higher EFR than the Gold Rathian weapon. Now, if we refer back to our handy little poison chart, to beat a 1.5% EFR gain on a 19,000 health monster, we only need one poison proc against either a 3-star or a 2-star monster to beat that. And we need two poison procs against a 1-star monster to beat that. And for speedruns, we've at least personally never seen any that get less than 3. For 25,000 health monsters, we're looking at 3 stars need 1 proc again, 2 stars need 2 procs, and 1 stars need 3 procs. So even on super clean speedrun level runs against 1 star weak to poison monsters, the Gold Rathian still beats this. But again, you don't always have a Gold Rathian option for your weapon class, so Runa no Gigante is the best option otherwise. Also, the Runa no Gigante does get a little bit of dragon damage. It works out to being 2 to 6 damage per hit, depending on the hits and value of the monster, though. This ends up not being enough to make up the damage difference from the Poison procs. Now, there is one other comfy longsword option that is competitive for longsword specifically and that is the Hellish Slasher. Now, before we get too into this, I do want to apologize about something first. When we did the whole Longsword Saga, we did refer repeatedly to the Hellish Slasher as the Hellish Trasher. We thought it was a funny meme and a funny joke to call it that, but in retrospect, it did discount how good the weapon actually is. It is still in the top 5 damage longswords in the game and it is still the third best comfy longsword in the game too. So I want to apologize for repeatedly calling it trash during the longsword saga because top 5 in the game is still top 5 in the game. 
at the end of the day, we're talking about literal 1-2% to differentials in damage. And just because it isn't number 1 at anything in the game doesn't mean it's still not a very, very good longsword. And calling it the Trasher repeatedly did kind of discount that, so sorry. Bronze medal at the Olympics is still bronze medal at the Olympics and all that. And that being said, even compared to the Gold Rathian and Runenuga Gansi weapons, the Halo Slasher has a unique niche for its comfy builds. Which is that you can get health augment on the Halo Slasher much sooner than you can on the Gold Rathian longsword as well as the Runenuga Gante longsword. Which is really nice for comfiness because you have to get pretty deep into endgame and hit at least MR100 to get a health augment for the other two weapons. Now I do personally have some opinions on how health augment is frankly overrated, but that is a topic for a different video. Either way, if you are looking for companies in your builds, the sooner you can get health augment, the better. Alright, moving on, let's look at the Hellish Slasher using this exact same build. Now, of course, we have to fit in non-elemental boost into this set instead. Now, realistically, if you are going to run out of 60 units of white sharpness, you'll probably run out of 80, so you should be running a razor sharp charm on this. But that does lower the damage of this build a lot, so we're just going to assume that 80 units is enough, but 60 isn't enough for you, so you do have to run razor sharp on the gold Rathian. This gives us a best case scenario for for the Hello Slasher. So this ends up putting us at 750.29 EFR. Now this is only 1.85 EFR higher, which is basically a rounding error compared to the Rune no Gigante Longsword. Unless a monster is completely immune to dragon, you'll end up doing more damage per hit with the Runa no Gigante Longsword. This is also only 1.75% higher EFR than the Gold Rathian Longsword. So once again, let's refer to our handy little chart. So at 1.75%, this means for a 19,000 health monster, Unsurprisingly, for a 3-star monster, this is going to be 1 proc needed. For a 2-star monster, we need 2 procs, and for a 1-star monster, we need 3 procs. Since 3 procs is pretty much the minimum we will be getting during a run, this looks pretty good for the Gold Rathian. For a 25,000 health monster, we unsurprisingly still only need 1 proc for a 3-star monster. We again need 2 procs for a 2-star monster, and we again need 3 procs for a 1-star monster. So yeah, the Gold Rathian is the best weapon choice for comfy sets. A close runner-up being the Rune Nurga Gante weapons if your weapon class doesn't have a Gold Rathian. But as we've shown in previous videos, it's also the best for full damage sets. This weapon is actually overpowered because it ends up being the best in almost every situation. The Gold Rathian weapons are just so stacked in terms of what you get on the weapons, plus they have poison damage to push them over the competition. There are cases where the Zora Longsword beats it and other little speed running specific strats, but it is just ridiculously overtuned. It has the highest base true raw in the game next to the Rajang weapons. 60 units of natural white sharpness so you don't have to invest any handicraft. Positive affinity even though it has the same raw as Diablo's weapons. Also gets a level 1 slot, oh and it has poison damage on top of all of that. These weapons are pretty overtuned numbers wise, enjoy them. Alright, that is all I have for you on this video. And thank you as always for checking out the video. If you have any friends who'd be interested in learning how overtuned the Gold Rathian weapons are, be sure to share the video with them. And if you enjoyed the video yourself, be sure to like the video and leave a comment below. Thank you as always to Honey over at HoneyHunterWar.com for creating and maintaining the tools we use to make sets with and we make our build cards with. If you'd like to meet other hunters to hunt with of all different skill levels, be sure to check out our Discord server, the Mathlos Nest. Just please keep all Iceborne specific talk to our Iceborne channel so that PC players don't get spoiled. And don't forget that we do have a Twitter where we post updates about videos and just general things that interest us, and Tuna does stream live on Twitch almost every single day. He will be live as soon as this video goes live, so be sure to go check it out. And of course, none of this will be possible without the generosity of our patrons. And especially a big thank you to our new patrons Double Heron and Saffron Turtle. Y'all support really does mean the world to us. It's what allows us to correct mistakes like we did in the past two videos without sacrificing our livelihood, so thank you again. Alright, that's all I have for you on this one. We do have that Lance Meta video on the way, and also patrons are allowed to vote for the next meta series coming after Lance. We also have plenty more just general guides as well as a comfy set series on the way, so if you'd like to see any of those as soon as they come out, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way YouTube will let you know the moment any of our new videos come out. Alright, happy hunting hunters, we'll see you in the next one. Bye!